So all four of our semi-finals played so far have been in two straight games. Just one more semi coming up. It's men's doubles. Son and Septino of Indonesia up against Chai Biao and Wu Jingdong of China. As the Chinese players make their way to court. Quite a difference in the volume to welcome the home players. Mohamed Hassan and Bona Sektanol. No doubting the home support here, trying to influence this match. And that's the beauty as a player of playing at home. Helps the Indonesian mixed doubles combination of Ahmad and Natsia. And also helped Marissa and Milati. Jill Kave and Grace Chia are court officials. Well, the Indonesian pair, winners of four career titles, but never a super series. They're up against a Chinese combination that's only playing in their seventh individual tournament together. Won the Malaysian Super Series event, of course, the first of the Super Series this year. A pretty good win-loss record, not only winners of Malaysia, three semi-finals, all England Asian Badminton Championships in Singapore last week as well. So since forming their partnership, they're a very consistent pair. But their quarter-final, I want to draw your attention to that, because that was against the qualifiers, Pratama and Saputra of Indonesia. What a tournament they had. They put out the number two seeds, Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Day in the second round. But it wasn't to be an all in Indonesian semi final because they went out to the Chinese in two straight games. So, not seeded, Mohamed Asan and Septano. They've had a great tournament this year down two places in the world rankings, down to number 10. But as you can see, second I round just, against the defending I champions, mean. Fang Chiaming and Li Xingmu of Chinese Taipei. Needed three games to win that in 53 minutes, and then in the quarterfinal yesterday against the number four seeds, Hu Kiang Kiat and Tan Boon Kiong, two straight games. Well, this, the third meeting between the two pairs, and third meeting this year. The last was in the quarter-final of the All England. And as you can see, the Chinese combination winning both of their previous meetings. First meeting, incidentally, was the semi-final of the Malaysian Super Series event. Oh God, please. Well, really came to everybody's attention, this Indonesian pair, when they reached the final of the Japan Open three years ago. Lost out to Lars Porsche and Jonas Rasmussen in that final. But surprise, finalists, nobody had expected them to go that far. And from there, they just got better and better. Ladies and gentlemen, on our right, Go Zhengdong. China. And on my left, Mohamed Hassan, Ola Septano, Indonesia. Ola Septano, Indonesia. Ola 
So the number eight seeds from China, nearest to us, Chai Biao and Guo Zhengdong. Up against the home players. Mohamed Hassan, there he is serving. Great serves to get the Indonesians the attack early on to settle any nerves. That is over. One, three. champion in the mixed doubles this man, Chai Biao. Two silver medals from two consecutive World Junior Championships in the men's doubles. It's interesting that his former men's doubles partner, Zhang Nan, now concentrating on the mixed doubles. Patu will be in the final tomorrow. Yeah, it's got a feeling for the next Olympic cycle, though. We might see those two back together. Yeah. I think they've both been given experienced partners to, to improve their level and gain experience on the tour, but I think we'll see those two back together because they looked a very exciting pair when they were young coming through. Yes, and they only went their separate ways earlier this year. And then in the semi final of the Super Series finals. Well, I'm not convinced that the drift, lengthways drift, hasn't changed. Well, it's quick and quicker, isn't it? Yes. I There's no, I wouldn't call either of them slow. I'd call one a little bit quicker than the other, but the horse playing very, very quick with this big crowd in today. The temperature's gone up. The shuttle speed's gone up a little bit again. You can see the Indonesian pair really concentrating on getting to the net early, getting the block in. And so far they're having a lot of success when they are getting those attacking opportunities. Wide. Seven, four. Didn't fully commit to the return there, was backing away. Hence the mistake. Seven, so to return. Five, seven. Zendong. That's where he's most comfortable in that four court. Good front court player. Needs to get in there and control the play. see the difference in the tactics between the two pairs, Jill. China pair more comfortable with that flat driving game, whereas the Indonesian pair like to step in and try and get the block, and they like a more up-and-down defence attack game. There we see the block. 
Of course, this man, Hassan, bronze medalist at the Asian Games at the end of last year, playing with Elvin Julianto Chandra. Good positive front foot defence there, uh, stepping up in the court to defend, using good width to break the attack in formation. That is over. Seven, nine. Indonesians are going to win this, they can't afford to be making mistakes from above net height. They're uh, just guilty of snatching that, whereas if he'd have just played the block, the Chinese would have been forced to lift higher and then he'd have had more time to play the attacking shot. Yes, what the ball has had to be. Power all out attack. As long as it's going in a downward direction. Yes, particularly in this hall, if you can get the get your opponent sitting up to you, you're very much in control. Say it's quick though, Jill. Yeah, very quick exchanges, very quick movements from all four players. Yeah, so not one single fan has left this arena. Absolutely packed to capacity. This is the last match on on semi-finals day. Very quick to get his racket up after it, the jump. Very aggressive after the service. You can see it again here, I'm sure. Oh, that's landed in. It's over. Nine, twelve. the indecision at the back of the court. Ten, Putting underarm, trying to clear it from the back is a tall order. Turning very well, they're getting lots of opportunities to attack at the moment. They just need to be a little bit more patient. 
Yeah, he gets through with the big smash, but that's all they've done so far from the rear court. There's not a lot of variety coming in. Apologising for hitting his opponent. Crowd don't like it. Yeah, read the situation well though. He's already coming in. Gonna leave room for a block from there. Chinese off the return of serve, forced to lift. Indonesia going for the big body smash. A little fortunate the Chinese opponent couldn't get out of the way though because it would have gone a long way out of the back. That is over. 12, 14. Service fault called above the waist. Yeah, so far, the Indonesians are winning the little battle on serve and return, aren't they, Jill? Very yeah. much so. Yeah. Opportunities to attack. Now, in particular, struggling on return so far. Back struggling all around. Better return, finding the net cord, taking it a little bit earlier. That's a good shot from Zandong. Yeah, it was good awareness, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of pressure coming on the straight. We'll see the Indonesians both move across to the right there. Zandong sensing that, going the other way with the flat drive. We'll see both Indonesians there moving to, moving away from the camera, leaving the space. Good awareness. He's been called a fault, but it was a very poor serve anyway. It was long way over the net. Yeah, at the moment, looking really under pressure. Dealing very well with the situation at the moment. Crowd's getting to him a little bit, I think. Well, he is still very young. He's only 20. Try to be out. Uh, got frustrated that they couldn't get through with their attack. They just panic a little bit and they just tend to hit hard, don't they? They didn't really, two or three times there they had real openings, but they just wanted to hit hard and they actually hit onto the defence. There's no real need to go for the line from there. I have to say he was in control of the point. A bit of patience required. serve from the more experienced Chinese player. And now just two points from this opening game for the Indonesians. And look at that. There's nobody home down the middle. 16, 19. The Chinese players looking at each other. 
Schiffel just drifting out the back. Yeah. That's not a particularly good low serve there either. Four game points for Hassan and Septano. experience than the two Chinese players. Yes, especially as last time he served, he served short. The Chinese say they don't want to change the shuttle. Still two game point opportunities for the Indonesians. convert 21-18 the crowd celebrates but it is only the first game they need to carry this momentum forward if they want to win this semi-final Sixteen minutes for twenty-one eighteen. It's an important first game though, Jill, because they've won from the harder end to play. That end's been much more difficult all week. There's the stats. Well overhead winners would be the would be the key there. That's the difference in points. And I do feel the Chinese have been giving the attack away a little bit too easily so far in this match. Chinese players are already back on court. Indonesian coaches still using their allotted time. And it's Zeng Dong talking a lot to his younger partner about using the block, not lifting. See, he's saying you've got to move forward. So having taken the opening game 21-18, and the Indonesians unseeded, remember, against the number eight seeds, can they push this advantage home? taking responsibility that's where the Chinese are going to turn this round it's going to be with Zeng Dong going forward as he did here getting control of that net area 
Good perseverance, good solid play there. Serving here. And once again, the Indonesians asking for the shuttle to be changed. And once again, the Chinese saying no. And the umpire agreeing with the Chinese players. Greeted with boos from the crowd. Again, it's Seng Dong going forward, trying to get the net. Definite signs that Guo Zhengdong is trying to be more aggressive, and that's not surprising considering he's openly stated his sporting philosophy is always to be aggressive on court. But that's sometimes his downfall. He does have one way of playing most of the time, doesn't he? One style. talking about they've got the power and they've got the penetration they drive the Chinese away but that's the first time they've really used that drop and look how effective it was of what you were saying, Jill, he was a little bit off balance, but he tried to be aggressive, just forced it out the back of the court. that shot this was a strange choice you can see what he was trying to do again trying to get it past Chai Biao but he was obviously off balance I don't know why he didn't lift it or push it deep Great smash from Chai Three, Biao. Four. Well, Kuo Zhengdong asked to tell down because he's got a slight blood injury. Well, he's saying, I don't need help, but the tournament doctor is being called by the tournament referee. Rules of international sport nowadays dictate that blood injuries must get immediate attention and treatment. 
and that's a pity because it's just interrupted the flow of the game. Dirk Hellerman, the tournament referee there. And I think we'll have the usual problem here, unless they put strap in all the way round. It's so humid that no plaster will normally stick to this. No. Stick to the arm now at this stage. Skin temperature's very high. Yeah, just, see it. Yeah, just yeah. grazed his knuckle there as he was diving for the shuffle. Well, have you got direct communication down to the area? Well, that might stay, but the plaster wouldn't have done, that's for sure. No. confirms that it is 6-4 in the second game. He made that error immediately. A little look back from Chai Biao towards his coaches. Yeah, he's getting a lot of advice. Oh, well, he hadn't left that. Last moment, it was the right decision, it was long of the back line. Just as well he did leave it because Hassan had turned round to look and see what was happening. And I know too well what can happen if your partner does then play the shuttle. Seven, six. Shuttle in the eye is a very nasty thing indeed. serve what a good Eight, serve six. almost seemed to chop underneath the serve there yes yeah, so it just cuts it slightly doesn't he which brings it down yeah followed by a brilliant flick nine six the indonesians don't like the fact that wasn't called Set it all up though. Allowed them to get the initiative in the point. That's another brilliant serve. Yeah, once Eleven, again, six. setting up the rally. On a run of five straight points from six all suddenly to the mid game interval with that five point advantage. And in that first game, Chappie, I was really struggling with his service. Two very poor short serves, but there he seems to have found a little bit of rhythm, bit of confidence. Makes all the difference. The initiative early on from those serve and return situations changes the whole pattern of play. The Indonesians have looked a little bit tentative seconds, in the last few points.
Well, this time the umpire agreeing with the Indonesians that the shuttle should be changed. 11-6, play. Guilty of thinking that the rally was already won. Chai Biao wasn't waiting, wasn't ready for that wonderful defensive shot. No, no, it stopped. Thought it done enough. Good defence from the Indonesians. Well, it's actually 7-11. That is over. Well... The Sensi and the Indonesians really need to try and close this gap now before the second game progresses too much further. Yes, the fire's gone out a little bit, hasn't it? But that good run of serving from the Chinese just dropped the tempo of the game, dropped the intensity a little bit. The Indonesians so far in this match have thrived on a very quick, yes. high-intensity rallies. That good run of serving from the Chinese just took the intensity out of the game. Well... Mohamed Hassan was saying to the umpire, look, I think Chinese have been bending back some feathers to make the shuffle a little bit slower. Now, looking towards the service judge, I was a little confused by her call there. Well, she's making it clear now. Racket not facing in a downward direction. Mm. I think that was harsh. Well, all this arguing and frustration, it's not going to help their game. You've got to take it away from Zeng Dong, who's sure to be following, he's sure to be coming in there. You've taken the block the other way, but he's in front of Chow Bao, a little bit more space. a desperation shot. Yeah, they've lost their way here. Pace has gone out of the game. The strapping didn't last very long. Jill, it's gone. These guys are sweating way too much to put tape on at this stage. Yeah. Um, all these little delays between the points. Chinese using everything just to break the tempo up to offer a rhythm that the Indonesians thrived on in that first game. That's a good interception from Septano. the first game, good channel attack, net player very alive to the situation, coming up with the interception. She 
so Jill, I think it's now or never though for this second game. The run of points here on service. The Chinese no, have been receiving to noticeably more aggressively in this second game. Having played the cross court block, neither of the Indonesian players readjusting their position on court, leaving a huge gap. Well, it's looking to me as if we're going to have a third and deciding game. Indonesians. Can't find any of the form that they showed in the opening game at the moment. Yeah, they're just getting less chances to attack. Chinese using a few more blocks, serving better, more aggressive on return. And when the chances do come along, 18, 10. They're just a bit impatient and trying to hit too hard too quickly. Two points away from this second game now. Now just the one. Game point. Little resistance from the Indonesians. Ten game points to try the out and Guo Zheng Dong. Suspect. That's it, second game to the Chinese. It's one game apiece. 21-11. 38 minutes of play. Quite frankly, looking at the match statistics there. Well, what do you make of that, Ian? Well, they've got more control of the net area, that's for sure. They became a lot more aggressive tactically on return of serve. They're pushing forward, taking it earlier. And took away those easy opportunities that the Indonesians had to attack in the first game. Really turned that game down around by good serving and good returning. And once the Indonesians were not getting those opportunities to attack, they looked a little bit limited. They looked very frustrated. Up there, the Indonesian coach really trying to motivate his players. Yeah, everything I think he's talking about getting forward, regaining control of that front court, 
They need the attack to win this match, that's for sure. Well, there's certainly little nods of approval of what the coach is saying. They did look awfully flat towards the end of that second game. Yeah, well, they're an attacking pair, they're an aggressive pair, and when they've got the attack, they look really good. When the intensity goes out of the game and they haven't been forced to play the shuttle from below the net when there's no pace, and they're not so, not so adept at that game, and therefore they lose their rhythm and they start to go for things that are maybe not there. So the key for them really is around the serve and return area. If they get the attack, they've got a good chance. If they don't, then I think they're going to struggle. Yes, and I think on top of that, I think it's absolutely essential for the Indonesians that they get a good start. Because I think if they get too far behind, then their heads may go down. Can't get a better start than that. Good net roll return. Over. One, all. Little battle for the ascendancy at the front of the court. It's Zeng Dong who came up with the with the advantage. And that's worrying for the Indonesian pair. First game, Chalbiar was just lifting from that position, and there he's looked for the block. Again, the shuttle with no pace at the front of the court gets the mistake from the Indonesians. There it is. Sure enough, it was Zengdong coming into cover. not going to that help the over. Indonesian cause. Three, two. No. On serve. No, he's really aware how much, how much they need good serving in return and they're just too tight. There's no pace on the shuttle below the net. Just missing a little bit of touch from those positions. set to get them back in it there he just tried to change the direction a little bit normally prefers the service right in tight to the tee and there tried to go wider and made the mistake again we're back in this situation Jill it's no lift badminton Pairs would rather take a risk and try and find a block from below the net than give the lift away at the moment. Yeah, because, of course, that's the problem when you do lift it. Yep. Clash of rackets, broken racket. Switch of attack, attacking the outside line and then going back to the centre. Yes, 
the umpire trying to encourage the players to get back onto court. Just arranging some rackets so that, if need be, they can dash off and grab another one mid-rally. The umpire just asking the Chinese players, there's a water bottle that's dropped into the courts around. And once that moved. Yeah, good play from Zeng Dong again, reading the situation well, good return, following it across, getting the interception. Stadiums come alive once again. And that might yet have an influence on the match. 266. sort of play that we saw from the Indonesians in the opening game. Yeah, good attack there. Positive play. They've still got the weapons if they can create enough opportunities in attack. Done. Did well to cope with the net cord return there. It's a good recovery to win that point. Block that again. Just trying to put pace on, off balance. What a great return at serve. Dennis made a little hold and flick from Mohammed Hassan deep into the Chinese forehand corner. Yeah, demonstrating your point, play the little block first, get the lift. And then it's all so simple. Yep, they can get through when they get the attack. The key is for them to get the attacking opportunities, and that means they've got to really step in and take the shuttle at the front of the court, get the block in, force the Chinese to live. Oh, he's 
ever done it. Over ambitious. This next point will have a big psychological influence. Yeah, it's a real momentum point, if you feel. Yeah, such an advantage to be changing ends with the lead, albeit just one point. is with the Chinese pair. And again, this child be out. Just a little run of serves at the end there. Two really good serves. Able to take the attack behind the service. And whichever team gets the attack is winning every time at the moment, Jill. Nobody's recovering from a defensive position. And I think that just emphasises the point that you've been making all week, that it is a fast haul. Yeah. Because we know, having watched all these top players in so many events around the world, when you've got a, a bigger stadium or a stadium that's slightly more difficult to time the shuttle, then the defensive play is just phenomenal. But we just haven't seen it because they're getting through with their attack. Zhang Jun, just as passionate as ever as a coach, as he was as a player. The crowd desperately trying to get behind their players here, trying to give them a lift, but I think the first two or three points now, after the break, are absolutely critical. 11, 10. Badminton, pretty clear what both sets of coaches said. Push, block, drive, but don't lift. It was a real frantic battle there. That's yeah, no choice such, there. Yeah, such a good return of serve. As you say, no choice. What else can you do? You've got to try lifting it. Yeah, well, they've been urging on the crowd all day. I've lost a few pounds today, though, in those suits <laughs> in the stadium. Yeah, great fun, folk. Crowd responding to them. Yeah, no pace from Hassan. Forces Chai Biao into error. it was good, I thought it landed yeah. in, I thought the line dodge got it right. Yeah, we're in good position here for that one, aren't we, Jill, and that definitely seemed to hit 
problem on the line. Yeah, yep. clearly. Yep. Yep. Willing it out as much as anything, I suspect. Yeah. He's in hope, I think, rather than judgment. Well, the fist aloft. I wish we'd be keeping account of the net cords in this match. A phenomenal number on serve yeah. and return, that's yeah. for sure. That's a couple of mistakes since the change of ends from Chai Bao. He's the youngest player on court. Maybe he's just feeling the pressure a little bit. Uh, I think they all are. Net cord return again, though, Jill. The margins are really fine here. I have the feeling one little run of serve will do it for either team at the moment. Precious point, one on serve. There's not been many of those recently. fast exchanges and Guo Zhengdong is just going to feed off that all day long. Yeah, he loves that. He loves that game. This is a strong guy, gets down quickly, keeps the racket high and loves that driving game. Going to do that with an easy perspective, you maybe want to be looking for Chai Biao there. Again, that's three points on this service, and I think that's going to be crucial, Joe. Yeah, I suspect you're right. He's the most experienced player on court, and he's showed it in the last three points. You know, it was a critical situation when he came in with service at 14 all, and he's found some really good tactics to pick up three points. Just made the break. Pressure's really on the Indonesians now. Seven minutes this match has been in progress. Turn, possibly three points too late. He's been pushing the returns. He's played into Seng Dong's hands. They put the block in, they get the lift, they win the point. Well, it's actually 15-17. There's a weakness in the Chinese game at the moment, it looks like Cha Biao, that's two or three easy mistakes. Again. 
Uh, too good. Yet another net ball return. How important was that? Force the short left. One or three at this stage of the game, crucial. Hey, he's nervous, very nervous, isn't he? He tried the out. Yeah. Yeah. He's a losing coach. That's what I'd be saying at the moment. That's a good serve. And they're back level. They've won four of the last five points. Eighteen all. from Mohamed Hassan and it's gifted two match points to Chai Biao and Guo Zhengdong. Oh, the nerves getting to everyone. Bitter disappointment for the Indonesians. But the Indonesian pair unable to hold their nerve in the end. And just when we thought Chai Biao was really struggling himself, the Indonesians unable to capitalise on his obvious nerves and stress at the pressure situation. Umpire confirming the scoreline, 18-21, 21-11, 21-18 in the deciding game. And the Chinese coaches absolutely delighted with that victory from the number eight seeds. Well, of course, an hour and four minutes for a thrilling men's doubles. And that means that we'll have all Chinese men's doubles tomorrow, because, of course, we've witnessed both of the men's doubles semi-finals. Well, the crowd will disperse because that was the last of our semi-finals this afternoon. We now know the entire lineup for tomorrow in all five disciplines. This the final point 
a mistake from Mohamed Hassan. He's off balance as he tried to play that shot. party atmosphere here in Historia Stadium. Many, many highlights in that men's doubles. was the moment when Indonesian hearts were broken because they had two chances in the men's doubles to progress through to tomorrow's final and they failed in both of them. But our semi-finals all started with Indonesian success in the mixed doubles and Tantoe Ahmad and Liliana Natsir absolutely disposed of the former world champions Leiborn and Ruta Yul. And then the current world number ones and three times world champions Kai Yun and Fu Hai Feng overcome the Olympic champions and then women's doubles. Well, what a sensation we had there. Vita Marissa and Nadia Malati beating the number four seeds, the Japanese pair. Lee Chong Wei had to work very hard for his victory over Chen Long, the number four seed. And of course, Lee Chong Wei going for his fourth title tomorrow. And then, as we've just witnessed, another men's doubles and more disappointment for Indonesia with Chai Biao and Wu Jingdong going through in three games. The only one of our semi-finals to go the full distance. So that means we know the lineup for tomorrow. This is not the order. The order has not been confirmed, but do we know that it will be many singles Lee Chong Wei against Peter Gaida. Peter Gaida, 15 years since he was last in a semi-final here and tomorrow he's going to be in a final then we've got the two-time defending champion Sina Nawal of India uh, against Wang Yihan of China all Chinese men's doubles as I say women's doubles well the current world number ones Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang up against the Indonesian sensations and then mixed doubles and the world number ones Jiang Nang and Zhao Yunlei up against the world number twos the Indonesian pair progressed to number two in the world ranking earlier this week. So that's the lineup for tomorrow. We, of course, will be back with all the action. It's at 13.30 local time. That's 06.30 GMT. And as the party continues here in Historia Stadium, that concludes us for today. Do hope you'll join us tomorrow. But in the meantime, from Ian Wright and myself, Jill Clark, bye for now.